Hi, welcome to Chemistry 3006, the hydrosphere. We're talking about metal ions and their salts and whether they are soluble or insoluble. We were talking about hard soft acid base theory. So let's look at some examples of what hard and soft things are. Um, inorganic and organic ligands contain uh, the donor atoms shown. So here we have, let's look at like nitrate. Uh, and the ligands are composed of atoms and these atoms can be bonded to the metal. So all of the things in blue, um, all of the atoms in blue which bond to the metal, those are soft species. Now which are the, uh, well perhaps it's easier to look at the hard ones. The hard ones are small and negatively charged, at least in these inorganic uh, species. So fluorine is obviously hard, oxygen is small and negatively charged. Nitrogen tends to be hard, but it's a little bit both, intermediate. Chlorine's intermediate. Sulfur can be hard, can be hard, uh, but it's generally on the soft side. So as we go down the periodic table, the atoms become bigger. As they become bigger, those electrons are less, held, less strongly held and more polarizable. Uh, so the, as we go down the periodic table, we have a lot of softer atoms. So basically the top right corner, just two atoms are the hard species, hard anions. And that's what this says, hard Lewis bases. Lewis bases are electron donors. If they are donors at all, they hold on the electrons pretty tightly. Hard Lewis bases in which the donor atom is small and highly electronegative, FO or N. Those are hard Lewis bases. Soft Lewis bases are all the other ones. So that was the inorganic uh, species. Let's look at the metals, the Lewis acids. Those are the electron pair acceptors. They can also be divided into hard and soft. And here's the periodic table showing that. So the little blue island here are the soft metals. And you can see that they're big and big and they're towards the end of the periodic table here they've got a lot of d electrons so gold silver cadmium mercury uh, ruthenium all of these guys uh, from the second and third row are soft uh, whereas the guys which tend to be hard have a larger uh, negative charge uh, a larger nuclear charge so we have aluminium silicon uh, astatine, antimony, tin, all of these are uh, hard species and on the left hand side we also have hard species. These are ones which are highly charged. Magnesium 2 plus, uh, calcium 2 plus, rubidium plus. They're, they're, it's a big atom but it's a, it's a positive charge. Uh, once it's lost its electron, the remaining shell inside noble gas configuration is very small so it's hard. And in between, we have the intermediate species. Well, it depends, doesn't it? Look, Fe2 plus is intermediate. Fe3 plus would be on the hard side because it's got a large charge. Um, but we can see that uh, the hard species at the beginning, scanium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, uh, gradually morphs into intermediate. Then we have a couple of intermediates here, molybdenum, technetium, and then just below them as well. And on here we have lead and bismuth. Okay, so how does that all work? Let's look at some examples. Um, here are some examples. Um, mercury sulfide, that's soft. Mercury's down here, lots of electrons. Sulfur is one of those intermediate ones. So soft with soft, yes, insoluble. Mercury sulfide is insoluble. Copper sulfide, where's copper? Yes, it's intermediate, getting towards the heart. It's uh, intermediate, soft. So this is uh, getting to be soft, soft, a little, fairly strong interaction. All of these are insoluble. Silver sulfide, lead sulfide, of course. Look how lead is a big atom, very insoluble. Uh, cadmium, all of these are soft, soft chemical type interactions. Insoluble chlorides, AgCl. Always wondered why silver chloride was 
insoluble and sodium chloride was not. Well, sodium chloride, sodium is very hard. Chloride is mm, intermediate to hard. So it's hard to intermediate. Silver chloride, on the other hand, is uh, soft. Silver's down here, lots of d electrons. Chlorine, it's a big atom, it's an intermediate one. It uh, could be soft, but it's insoluble, and it is. You, you've tried to do these precipitation reactions. It doesn't precipitate that well, but it does precipitate. Mercury chloride, soft, soft. Lead chloride, soft. Insoluble sulfates, calcium sulfate. Calcium 2 plus with a soft sulfur. Strontium sulfate, okay, strontium's a little bit hard, but it's a big atom. Let's look up here, strontium, it says it's hard. Um, hard, no, it's big. Barium sulfate, 2 plus. Silver 2, silver, soft, 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 insoluble. Sol and now we come to the ones which are all soluble. Nitrates, nitrate is hard. Nitrate is hard, um, and when we interact that with a sodium, we get a hard, hard, that's soluble, weaker. Perchlorates, these are hard, soft. Sodium, perchlorate, it's hard, soft, it's, it's negligible. So nitrates and perchlorates, nitrate joining onto the N, uh, and perchlorate joining onto the chlorine. Chlorine is a little bit soft, and it has a lot more electrons coming from the oxygens around it. So you have to think about what these ligands are in terms of their electrons and how flexible they are. Okay, now uh, we can, you can see how this works and it's pretty useful for making a good guess. Um, now there's a few things correlated with these solubilities. Um, this is very good for predicting the stability of an iron pair. So if something is insoluble, that means there's a strong interaction between these particles. The stability of an iron pair is related to its insolubility. The stability uh, of the solid is related to the iron pair interaction. The stability of absorption of the complex metal with a ligand on a surface, all of these are related. See you later.